right, here we go. Another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, Patty Kudair, local realtor with Southern Group Ottawa. And today I'm joined with one of my best friends, JC Nasser with Revelation Marketing. So JC, I just wanted to kind of get started with the story of Revelation Marketing. How did it start? What got you here? Tell me a little bit more about, you know, let the audience know about this journey that you've been on. Of course. I won't go too, too much to the past. My brother and I, we started a business together called Juice Dudes. You interviewed them a year before. And I did all the marketing in the beginning. And uh, that's what I studied, marketing. And I worked in marketing in the past. And that's where my passion is. We did really well on marketing. Like, see these videos that you're doing right now for businesses that you're doing for yourself right now? I was doing those in 2019. Mm-hmm. Right? So we did really well. We had no competition on social media. So I'm like, oh, shit, that's what I actually love doing. And then everyone started asking us, who's doing your marketing? I had printed some red business cards and started giving them away to customers. I got five clients. Nice. So I told my brother, I got to step out, start my own marketing agency. I gained my my confidence back because I had done Uber. No one would give me a job in marketing when I moved to Canada in 2018. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going to start a company. I barely know how to speak English. I still like struggle. But then I gained some confidence because I did such a good job. And I got a couple of clients and, you know, did a good job with them. Uh, COVID hit. After four or five months, all of them got on hold. Yeah. Nobody was doing a lot of marketing then because they, they just had no idea what's going on, what's coming down the pipe. Yeah, everyone closed down and took a break and took a step back, especially restaurants. They were thinking, you know, I will be able to avoid rent payments if I close down completely. That one of, one of the clients, you know, told me this. They're like, oh, my lawyer consulted me to close down completely because if I'm still open. That means I have to pay rent. But if I close down because of COVID, the government's going to help me out. Stuff like this, you know. Then two months later, no, I think it took a little bit more. Two to four months later, me like just thinking, what the hell should I be doing right now? I got a call from one of my clients. He's referring me to one of his friends. They own a construction company and um, they wanted to meet me. I met them in my house, in my shorts, and I listened to them. They're starting a construction company and they're still my clients till now, five years later. Fantastic. So what what is it exactly that you guys specialize in uh, under the umbrella of Revelation Marketing? So this is a good question. Under the umbrella of Revelation Marketing, there's five other companies, four other companies. So Revelation Marketing, you have Ottawa Podcast City, that's where we're sitting right now. You have the selfie room. It's like a very small business with a couple photo booths that we rent out. And now we go bigger. Go Revelation Studio. Revelation Studio does everything, photography and videography for weddings, events, commercials, real estate, anything you can think of. If you're recording recording your course, Mm -hmm. anything. We have our own studios as well. And then you have Revelation Marketing. Revelation Marketing, in the beginning, used to do lots of marketing production. So we, we run your social media. We run your ads. We create your website, we create your logos, branding, ins and outs, everything. Now we do almost 30% production and 70% education because we notice that there's a big gap in the market where all business owners have lack of knowledge in marketing. So they try to do it themselves and fail or they try to 100% delegate it and you should never 100% delegate it. Yeah. And when you say education, what is it exactly that you mean by that? Two things. I have built a course with other coaches, not just my knowledge, collecting all the patterns that I saw in the last five years working with business owners. And now we teach business owners directly how to run their marketing. And then when they get really busy, they can delegate it, but not 100% because this is a mistake everyone does again. Mm -hmm. So you should never, you should never delegate your marketing 100%. You should be hands on. All right, once a week, once a month. So we teach you how to run it yourself after six months, eight months, nine months. Oh, your business is growing. Now you don't have time to do this anymore. You teach someone or you hire someone to do it for you. Yeah. This is the one, first thing. The second thing, we train your employees. And with the help of government grants, because actually if you're an Ontario business, you are qualified for about 83% refund on a training program that you purchase. But they have to approve. You heard it here first. Yeah. So, yeah. 
Yeah. And if you want more information about this, definitely hit me up in the comments. I'll connect you with JC. Yeah. Definitely... We're not going to give too much names now. What's the name of the program and everything. You can contact us later for this stuff. And I can walk them through all the details. It's it's very straightforward. It's been there since 2014. Business owners don't know of it. Yeah. It's so sad. There's so many things like that, the like government grants and government funds and things like that are available for businesses to tap into. But if they don't know it, it's yeah, some of them are also expensive. Some of them are too complicated. When I say expensive, like a person like me doesn't like the computer. Tell me I'll get you 83% refund on a training program for your employees, but you have to have to go through 100 pages and application and whatever and back and forth. I'll say, no, thank you. I'll spend this time working, make this money. I'll spend it on my team. And then my other alternative is to hire a grant writer to do it for me. Grant writer is going to charge you fees, Less commission, stuff like that. Then you look at it, oh, that's my 83% refund is gone. For us, we found the gap and we solved the problem. That's all I'm going to say right now. You reach out to us and you'll know how we can help you and you will be winning at the end. So we train your team on marketing, SEO, SCM, and SMM. And that's how we can help you. Some business owners, they do not want to be hands-on. They want to train their team to take care of it for them. There's two ways to do it. You learn how to do it or you teach your team. We do both. But it should never be completely outsourced. Is that what you're saying? A hundred percent. You never should delegate it 100 percent. But also don't be a control freak and you don't know shit. And that's what many business owners try to do or their wives usually have problem with their wives. You know, the wife is trying to feel valuable and try to, oh, I don't like this. Well, what, what's, yeah, what like makes having, you qualified not to like it? Having a couple of partners in the business sometimes kind of. Yeah, yeah. The more voices. The more voices. The, by wife, I don't mean the actual wife. It's usually your partner that is being. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just the, it's the, the, the list. The list. Exactly. Could be a cousin. Yeah. Now, with that being said, I want to kind of delve like dig into each one of those organizations that oh, you shit. have under Revelation Marketing. Oh, shit. Let's start with the Revelation Studio. What do you guys specialize in there? What do you do? So Revelation Studio, we in the middle of COVID, after five months, we got this first client in construction. Then after this, I'm like, okay, where's the next client? Damn, there's no next client. So I started doing research. Who's making money now in Canada and Ottawa? Mm -hmm. It was only realtors. Real estate was booming. Everyone else is closed. I still don't understand how that works. <laughs> how can people go put down payments and buy homes and they're not working? But it was happening. And then I did my best to line up a meeting with uh, a real estate agent. One of my friends, he was an agent. He was working with the bigger team and they he introduced me to them. And they gave me a chance. I told them, if you don't like it, don't pay me. If you like it, you pay me discounted price. They said, yes, we did it. We did a good job. Real estate, photography, and videography. We did a really good job. Mm -hmm. And then we started helping them. And then I got 30 clients later in two months because there was a shortage in supply. There's lots of demand. They, they, all the realtors, they be, yeah, they started wanting to do fancy stuff all of a sudden because they're making good money. And now who who treats the... Uh, the landlord better, right? We, when it's uh, when it's a seller's market, everyone competes better, to yeah. treat the the seller, not the buyer. Yeah, it's really just like the yeah. way we look at it is like, what's my sort of differentiation point from the next realtor coming in? Is that marketing? Exactly. What I put on the line as far as like making sure that the product moves fast. Yeah, so because we saw that the photography and videography for real estate is there's very high demand, I'm like, okay. I'm going to go do the photography and videography and convince them to do marketing after. I earn the trust, I earn the credibility, and I do their marketing. And then after a year, one of my real estate clients, she calls me. It's like, JC, my wedding is next week on a Saturday. I'm like, okay, congratulations. Thanks for the invite. She's like, I'm not inviting you. <laughs> I need you to film my wedding. I'm oh, like, wow. yeah, we don't do weddings. And <laughs> he's like, my videographer canceled on me. And I need to live stream this wedding for back home. There's 3,000 people that want to watch it. And you have to do it for me. I'm like, I've never done it before. And back then I was dating and I was going skydiving that weekend. No, yes, no, yes. And then I told her how much you're willing to pay. She told me that I'm like, I'll do it. <laughs> I'm a sucker money for talks. money. <laughs> I call my team. I call my guy. I'm like, do you do weddings? No. Okay, let's figure it out. We figured it out. I hired someone with them just in case, just to keep it safe. You know, A-B planning. Mm -hmm. And we did the wedding and we did such a good job. We live streamed the wedding to 3,000 people and we filmed the wedding and we edited it and we delivered it and the client was happy. And then I got another client. This is just me not going after weddings. Got another client. We did such a good job for them. 
I made money and I was fun. Well, all right, let's go. Started doing weddings. Now we do 40 weddings a year. Wow. And this, this a season. And we have the camera crew, photographers, videographers, very talented team. We have a studio. So we started, you know, doing headshots and doing all the other stuff. Everything related to cameras, we do. We've done government jobs, government events. Uh, we're very fast and we're very affordable. And when you say fast, you mean like as far as delivery or after the, the fact. And that's the big thing I find with a lot of weddings is like you know, waiting two or three months for the picture. We deliver within the week. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty quick. <laughs> Definitely quick. And the selfie room, when did that start? What's the story behind it? One of my very good friends and he's like, you know, he's, been, he's a photographer, but he doesn't work for me. He's a contractor with us. And he also have access to the studio. He tells me, listen, there is this system in Toronto and in Montreal. There's only one place in Montreal, Montreal and one place in Toronto that does it. And you can take your own photos with the remote control. And it's very, very, very cheap. And it's like it could be a date idea. If you want to take your own headshots, it's going to cost you 20% of what, was, what it was going to cost you. I'm like, okay, tell me more. He showed me. He's a techie guy. He's like, I can build the system. But I need your studio to do it at your studio and whatever. I'm like, okay, partners, we should hands on it. Started this business. Damn, man. I charge, I charge $280 an hour. Right? Editing included. This system, you could do it for 75 bucks. Oh, wow. And we get lots of calls that want headshots and they can't afford it. And we don't get them as clients. So like, I'm like, I'm not going to hire uh, unskilled employees so I can provide at cheaper rates. So I understand that photographers don't want to drop their rates. But this is something that is automated. So there's no labor cost. And this is why it's cheaper. And yeah, we could also send it to events and stuff like this. So um, that's more of a photo room. booth they go in. Kind it's of- a system. It's not a photo booth. A photo booth doesn't give you high resolution pictures. This is a system that you can take your own photos with, with the remote control. You sit down, you pose, take pictures. We set up the lighting for you. Everything is done for you. And you barely need to edit after this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I've used it with one of my events, actually. Uh, a it was a birthday ago. or something like yes, that. Yes, birthday. Yeah. yeah. So, Revelation Marketing, Revelation Studio. Selfie Room. Selfie Room. Ottawa Podcast Studio. Ottawa Podcast. What's the story behind the Ottawa Podcast? I know it started, what, a year and a half ago? Do you want to know the actual story? Yeah. I was drinking a bottle of wine. Mm-hmm. At the end of the bottle, I'm like, marketing is switching to podcasts. That's two years ago. And... Here in Canada, we're always like a little bit later than the U.S. And it was starting in the U.S. and I could smell it. I'm like, okay. And I had a space, this space here, it's above my actual space. I'm like, it hasn't been rented for four years. I'm going to talk to the landlord and try to get it for a cheap price. Mm-hmm. If I get it for a cheap price, I'm going to make it a podcast studio. The half and the other half, an art gallery for my mother because she's an artist. Back and forth. Three months, I got the space. Back and forth, six months, podcast studio is ready. Now, what does the podcast studio do? How many people you know, and you were one of them, want to start their podcast studio? You're like, how do I use this? How do I put the camera? How do I put the light? Yeah. No one knows it's a this. Challenge. It's a massive challenge. And, and it's, it's like, what, 30, 40 grand to set up something like that. Maybe. And then to figure it out. What do you want to do to figure it out? Like every time you want to film a podcast, you have to put a couple hours to figure it out. So I'm like, ah, oh. I, I remember this and remember the gym. I'm like, if I were to build a gym in my basement, I would have been so skinny now and, and not working out. But because there's a gym and there's a membership, I go. Everything is done for me. All I have to do is just do this one hour session. So I wanted to create a podcast studio that is done for you. You walk in with your guest and you leave with the footage. Everything else we take care of, Right. And if you want to edit, you can edit with us, you hire Revelation Studio. But if you want to edit it on your own, I give you the full freedom. MySpace is offering the equipments, the production. You just walk in and leave with the footage. You don't need to feel dumb every time you're trying to film your podcast. Yeah. And what does it take to, like, I mean, you, you're a serial entrepreneur, obviously, with the, with the sounds of this. You've been doing this now for five years, five plus businesses, technically. What does it take? We're opening a juice in Orleans now. I'm I'm opening yeah. this location. So uh, this begs the question of what does it take to become a successful business owner in Ottawa? I'm not successful yet. I'm on my way. But what does it take? 
I was actually, I was actually having conversation on a Zoom call yesterday with a with a kid, nineteen year old. He's trying to ask me like, doing this, paving air. He's trying to find the easiest and the fastest way to make money. I let him speak. I let him speak. I'm like, listen, listen, Habibi. It's not gonna happen fast. And it's not gonna happen now. Mm-hmm. He's like, I want to keep my lifestyle. I want to see my loved ones. I'm like, three years. You gotta escape three years. Sleep, eat, work, repeat. Sleep, eat, work, repeat. You can throw a gym session in there. Yeah, that's how it works. That's it. You don't need to be smart. You don't need to have all the knowledge. Once you're trying so much, you'll gain the knowledge. Uh, yeah, and there's something to be said, I think, about like people seeing what you're doing and how you're trying that they're they're actually gonna help you. You know what I mean? Like when someone sees that you're doing all of that. To try to get somewhere, they go. Oh, well, this person is really dedicated. I want to want to give them some some of my time. That's why I was able to get my client for the real estate. I sat down and I told him, "I'm not leaving until I convince you." And this is my portfolio, and that's what I've done. And he saw that I'm trying, trying, trying so hard. So like I'm gonna count on this guy. I'm gonna bet on them. Mm-hmm. Who would you put your money on? Some lazy guy with a with a great idea, or someone else who's putting so much work and the idea is not complete yet. Well, that's the thing. The idea will complete at some point by the fact that they're trying. There's trying execution. Trying. Exactly. There's execution. And that's the big difference between the people that do and the people that don't is that execution. The fact that they just get up yeah. and do it. So with that being said, what's next for JC? I'm trying to calm down and starting new things. And this is for the people who are listening out there. Don't do that. It's not a good idea. I, I'm still till now, I wasn't able to maximize on any of my businesses. So we did great. We hit a point and then I'm like, oh, I can't maximize. I can't get there. And because I was so stubborn and I wanted the five companies, like that was my goal. I wanted the five companies. I want them to work. Five of them are profitable. Thank God. We're good. We were never late on payment. Like, you know, we had the struggles, but the five of them are good, but I still can't maximize on any because they're five and I'm alone. Correct. So if you don't have partners, if you don't have, you know, strategic plan, how, how, who's managing what, don't do it. What's next for JC? We're going to the next one and this is going to be the end of it. And then after this is just investing. We just actually incorporated Revelation Mark Academy and Revelation Mark Academy is Marketing Academy. That's where we're going to teach business owners how to run their marketing. I am not going to teach marketers how to become better marketers because many marketers out there are better than me. But I know no one is trying to help business owners with honesty. No one. I know all of my business owners, they try to buy courses, they come back to me dumps. So we're trying to solve this problem. Yeah. And the reason being, I mean, like at the end of the day, these marketers, that's their job, right? Like they're not going to go and teach somebody their job so they can, their job become obsolete. I disagree with you. I'll t- I, this, this is what they think. So you're right. But I disagree with the strategy, with the idea. For me, every time I get a client, I do not take them as clients before I educate them first. If you don't understand what I'm doing for you, how can you be pleased? How can you notice that I'm putting in the hours? Mm-hmm. When you wanted to do the podcast with me, I explained to you everything and the, how the future would look like. I told you, this is the commitment. This is this. This is that. This is how it works. I showed you the studio, all this stuff. So you have to do the education. So what I'm doing, I'm doing a favor for marketers out there. Because when I'm educating the business owner and the business owner end up hiring someone to help, the business owner will understand what this person is doing for them. And they will tell them, thank you, this is your reward. You actually put in the work. I appreciate what you did. Yeah, yeah so that's that's the pattern that I'm trying to break. I'm not trying to take jobs away from marketers because I won't be able to. As a business owner, you need to have a marketer on your side because you don't have the brain for marketing. When it's your product, you're so emotionally attached to it. Oh, my product, that's my baby. You don't listen to the customers as much. A marketer only will care about the customer. So you need this balance. What it, what does it take to become a great marketing company? You've been doing it for five years now. You guys have got tons and tons of clients. What does it take to be where you are from a marketing perspective? You want to be great, make so much money, or great, have great reputation. There's a difference. A a balance, a healthy balance. You can't make money in the beginning. This is the first thing. Second thing, you just got to be honest. You got to be honest with your clients and don't oversell them. This is something marketers always do. 
they try to give the client services that is not going to give them good return and they just want the money grab in the beginning right i had a client yesterday he owned three franchises for a business here in ottawa and i think prad heard the conversation i'm like he's like that's what i want how much do you want for it this is not how it works i tell you what you need and how much you should pay for it when i first started the business i'm like what do you want i'll give you a price i'll do it i'll calculate my costs and i'll make money that's not how it works the marketing agency is the only agency you don't run it as a business because when you want to run something as a business you say that's my cost that's my profit let's go yeah marketing is like man you're trying to cure someone you're trying to cure a business if this business goes bad it's the responsibility people lose their jobs uh, people won't be able to put food on the table so if you have if you want to be a good great marketing company i think you need to have this mentality yeah like you you're there to help in a way that it's it just it brings value to the business and sometimes you have to be very honest and fix the issues that is happening and this will cost you clients some the, the guy is like i can't do this now i'm like yeah but i i won't do anything that is not going to help you and you want me to do this and you're willing to pay me i'm telling you i will make money on doing this but 6 months later you'll tell me jc you did a bad job what's the difference for you what's the difference between doing a great job and a bad job in your opinion great job is there's more than one winner a bad job there's only one winner or no winners usually end up no winners I'll I'll make it more simple. A good job, me and the client are happy. Their client maybe they're not happy because we took their money. Right? You can please everyone. A bad job is or the client is happy because I'm losing money and I wasn't able like I did a good job but I didn't price it properly or the client is taking advantage of my time too much. I'm letting them do this or I'm cashed out. I have money in the bank. I'm not giving much flexibility for the client but the client is not happy because of various reasons and then this will lead to bad reputation and then I'll lose at the end. So that's how it's a win-win. So if it's not a win-win it's Yeah, it, there has to be more than one winner. Yeah. And what are some of the specialties that you guys have for the business? Like what what type of business do you specialize in? Is there such a business that you would say no to? Such a business would say no to someone is trying to screw business owners. Remember when the interest rates were going up like the first like the beginning of the hike 2 years ago uh, one of the real estate agents uh, came to my office and they're like no they're not going up no the prices are good this is the actual value for the homes and that's the promotions that I want to do and whatever i kicked him out of my office and i'm like i'm not going to help you lie up people yeah right your real estate agent your job is to be honest right anyways these are the clients that i don't take what do we specialize in if you're an actual marketer you understand this marketing is asking what does the consumer want so you could sell lawyers doctors real estate anything if you understand market so we don't specialize in anything because we located in Ottawa we started in Ottawa right i now what i teach my students that i'm teaching them this business tell them you know find a niche but your area has to allow you to find this niche right so we do almost everything because i love doing everything and that's why now we're doing way less production we do less production because it's not very profitable not to have a niche but we've done construction for food for real estate for lawyers whatever you can think yeah. of we have a big portfolio thankfully so what are some of the ways that you guys sit down and and kind of figure out what the business really needs so when the client comes in i ask them where are you at i ask them to be very honest with me because sometimes they like they don't want to tell you that we're we're boozing sometimes they're afraid to tell you we're doing really good right so first thing i'm like third thing You don't lie to your doctor, you can't lie to me. I'm the doctor for your business right now. Mm-hmm. You have a problem, that's why you're here. And I asked them, you know, where are you at? What was your sales in the last 2 3 years or the last period? Has it been going up? What's the plateau? What have you tried before with your customers and marketing ways? And I look into like what worked and what didn't work. And then I asked them, what do you want? Some some businesses they can't have more growth. some businesses they can and they want it some businesses they want to maintain some businesses they want to lose some of the growth to increase some of the prices and just be more selective change the type of customer yes yeah yeah i say it's just have a niche now like by example construction companies i know this client that started with me 5 years ago wanted every single business now they only want the luxury customers correct so they want to so they want to have less growth right now less clients so we asked them what do you need 
And then now I can identify their clientele. Then after identifying the clientele, I go to the clientele and I ask them, what do you need? Right? <laughs> if this guy needs you, I want to see if this is a good match. Right? If this business thinks that this is the right clientele and they have a product for this clientele, that means most probably this clientele wants this product. Correct. So I'll go to this clientele and I'll do some analytics with them. Like I'm not the business. I'm just asking you. And it's usually friends, family, and connections. Hey, what would it take to sell you this? What would it take to, when was the last time you bought this? When would you buy this again? And what would you ask if you wanted to buy this? And and this, I'm giving you a big tip right now, a big marketing tip, but let everyone just have some values on this podcast. And then after I find what this person, the clientele is looking for, what is this business is offering, then I find the matchmaking and then we focus on it with organic ads or paid ads. Yeah. Right? But before you do this, you'll be just trying. And that's why some businesses, they're still trying till now and they can get clients off mm-hmm. of social media or online and they blame metaverse. JC, it was wonderful, man. Thank you so much for making the time, having you know, having me on your podcast and having the podcast honored by you. Feels really good on the other it. side. <laughs> um, for once, he's in the hot seat, but he still tried to take the mic from me, but it's all good. Huh. Thank you so much. And people that are watching here, thank you so much again. And uh, please don't forget to smash the like button, hit the bell icon so you can get more and more episodes about this uh, and subscribe. So that way, whenever those episodes come out, because they're always delayed, whenever they come out, you get a, a bit of an alert and at least you know that it's coming. Thanks again.